I call Pini Henare. Reo Māori, Mr. Speaker. A tēnā koe te māngai o te whare tuatahi māku a ka tuku nātu ko ngā poroporo aki ki te hunga mate. Rātau kua ngaro atu ki te pō, rātau kua kapo hia ake ai e te ringa kaho aitu a, aitu ere, aitu kikini, aitu tāmaki. Nāna i kō whaki ai te kau ai o te rā e tangi mai rā, o te rā e tangi ake rā, o tātau e tangi atu nei. Nō reira koutou e te hunga wairua, haere, ka whakahokia mai ngā rārangi kōrero kia tātau e te hunga ora tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātau katoa. Mr. Speaker, I thought it appropriate to farewell the departed. The reason I say that is because throughout this entire um, coronial amendment bill, we have heard some very horrific stories, some sad stories. Families who have shared their experiences and remembered their loved ones during their time sharing with the select committee. And now that we've come to this final stage, the third reading of the Coroner's Amendment Bill, Mr. Speaker, thank you for your indulgence uh, in allowing us to put that part behind us to now address the living. And it's in that vein, Mr. Speaker, I turn now to the Coroner's Amendment Bill and uh, thank you for allowing me this contribution. Mr. Speaker, my colleague Jacinda Ardern has already uh, made clear the position from this side of the House, or certainly from the Labour Party, about the thoughtful consideration given to the Coroner's Amendment Bill. Um, at some point, in, at points in time throughout the process, we were very close to supporting the bill. In fact, uh, if I recall correctly, we were going to support this bill. However, on balance and upon reflection, we've decided not to. She has detailed quite clearly um, the reasons for that, and I wish to touch on a few of those and also respond to some of the comments made by the chair um, uh, from the select committee, uh, the member Jackie Dean, uh, and who's just finished her contribution uh, today. Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Speaker, sorry. She mentioned uh, um, that the Labour Party didn't consider or regard well enough uh, the amendment in this particular bill with regard to um, those of our uh, armed services who pass away or who um, uh, die tragically during service. Uh, Mr Speaker, I take my lead from the Honourable Phil Goff on this matter, who I thought represented his particular SOP throughout this bill really well. And he was very clear in his discussions with the Select Committee and indeed the debates in this House. He put the family at the forefront. He put the family at the centre of all considerations uh, with regard to his SOP and this particular bill. Um, but he also was quite, I thought, balanced in his view of it with regard to um, the ability for the Attorney General um, to uh, uh, be able to withhold some of the information, to be able to direct parts of the investigation should the coroner have to step in uh, and investigate our service or the passing of a service our armed service people uh, while in military uh, combat or military action. And I take my lead from him because, like I say, I thought he delivered a very well-balanced SOP. He fought hard for it, and we're disappointed on this side of the House that it did not uh, come up uh, and make it above the bar to be considered in this particular bill. Uh, Mr Speaker, my colleague Jacinda Ardern also spoke about the need for recommendations by the coronial system to be uh, considered seriously, and at the very least, to be given an appropriate response, at the very least. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, recently, approximately three weeks ago, um, an uncle of mine passed away tragically on a farm up in Mōtatau in the far north. And I understand the coroner, or uh, the coronial process has kicked into gear, and I wonder, Mr. Speaker, whether or not some of the recommendations that may come from this report hopefully will save others who find themselves on the farm, find themselves in those situations. But what can we tell the New Zealand public to reassure them that the coronial process is one, robust, two, uh, well considered, mm -hmm. and three, that the recommendations they make will um, keep New Zealanders safer? make processes better, hold people accountable, 
uh, Mr. Speaker, and I'm reminded of a, a particular saying uh, that says, um, uh, we've got it here. Uh, it, the first time is a tragedy, the second time is a farce. Now, if we don't allow the recommendations um, by the coroner's office to be taken seriously, and as I've already mentioned, at the very least um, be given a response, then I'm afraid that we may find that the deaths, the unexplained deaths, the tragic deaths of Kiwis moving forward or into the future uh, will be an absolute farce. Uh, my colleague mentioned the forestry uh, sector uh, who have experienced their fair share um, of tragic uh, incidences over the past few years. And they were highlighted to, in particular, the Labour um, caucus, uh, if I recall, a year ago, where we, were, we received some of the families who are dealing with the loss of a loved one from the forestry sector, who felt that their voice wasn't being heard, who felt that um, these kinds of deaths could have been avoided. Uh, and I think about their um, stories told to us when we look at the coroner's amendment bill we're debating right now. And we hope, Mr Speaker, that in the future there will be an opportunity whereby the recommendations um, made by a coroner can be taken seriously and can, at the very least, have a response. And my colleague mentioned earlier, uh, Mr Speaker, that we, despite the SOPs presented by the Labour Party, by Jacinda Ardern, by the Honourable Phil Goff and by uh, Calvin Davis, despite them not passing through or being considered um, uh, in this particular bill, being voted down, we will be continually looking um, at the coroner's, uh, uh, the coronial process to make sure that, well, one, it's reached the intent, it meets the intent that's um, described in this bill, and two, uh, we will be keeping a close eye on it to make sure that if at any time in the future we feel that we have the opportunity to come back in here to make this particular bill more robust, make, make sure that the process is more robust, the coronial process more robust, then we will be right at the forefront of that. And we want to reassure the New Zealand public that despite our opposition of the bill at this particular point in time, in the, in the third reading, we do take it seriously. And we thought long and hard about it. We considered the bill uh, in its detail for some time and debated amongst ourselves whether or not to. And sadly, we feel that uh, at this point in time, we can't support it. Mr Speaker, um, just... Um, to my point around the recommendations, and uh, Jacinda Ardern mentioned it briefly. And the particular study uh, that we considered, thank you, Mr. Speaker, um, uh, the New Zealand Coroner's Recommendations 2007 to 2012, and the results of those recommendations over a five year period, there were 607 coronial inquiries that resulted in 1,644 recommendations. There were 309 recipients of coroner's recommendations. Government organisations received the highest proportion of recommendations. The highest proportion. And Mr Speaker, um, the evidence is right there that all of these recommendations, we believe, given the robust process that the coroner goes through, um, need to be considered seriously. Need to be considered seriously. Mr Speaker, uh, in conclusion, once again, we reluctantly cannot uh, support this bill. We hope that the coroner's uh, office going forward into the future will receive the support and the capacity from this government to fulfil their duties uh, to the best of their abilities. Mr Speaker, uh, just in conclusion, can I echo the words of the chair of the select committee in thanking the families, the officials, um, who came in and made submissions on this particular bill. I mentioned at the beginning of my contribution just how hard it was for, for some of us to hear the evidence and the submissions from the families. And um, once again, on this side of the House, we reluctantly cannot support the bill. John